It's the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. I'm Adrian Ochoa, joined as always by Nate Ryan, Rachel Phillips. We have reached the halfway point of the season. Oh boy, where does the time go? I've Seriously. been asking myself the same deal. <laughs> Weeks are flying by, that's for sure. Certainly yes. do on this show. <laughs> exactly. Some teams keep on rolling while others are in a bit of a rough start. Had a bit of a rough start, but are peaking at just the right time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineup. Our game of the week takes us to the sack where the undefeated Eastlake Falcons were taking on the 2-2 two two Pebble Hill Spartans. Then it was a West Side shootout between Franklin and Eastwood, and then Andrews trying to continue their winning ways against Austin. But of course, we'll start in District 16A. The East Lake Falcons looking to remain a perfect 4-0 entering the night. They were taking on a Pebble Hills team, coming off an upset win against Eastwood last week. It's tonight's game of the week. Starting the first quarter here as Pebble Hills quarterback. Oh, let's, oh, let's just enjoy the, that. That was a nice shot there by Jerry there. Gael Ochoa passes it to Jaleel Boss. It's going to make it 6-0 Pebble Hills. The extra point was no good. Eastlake going to answer right back, though. Elijah Uribe with the keeper. And shakes off a defender there. And Elijah Uribe welcome to end zone city. It's 7-6. Eastlake on top. Then in the second quarter, Pebble Hills. Ochoa going to pass it to Marcus Torres. Makes it 14-7 Pebble Hills. And Pebble Hills going to go for the two-point conversion. Ochoa to Eric Marin. Made it 14 to 10. Pebble Hills lead at the half, but Eastlake would go on a run in the second half and actually shut out the Spartans. Held them goose eggs there in the second half as the Falcons go on to win 33 to 14. Eastlake remains perfect on the season, 5 and 0. Oh, we caught up with an excited Eastlake head coach, Ruben Rodriguez. It wasn't so exciting the first half for us. Uh, we had a lot of turnovers. Obviously, we know the secret now. We uh, we lost our quarterback last week and. Had to make some adjustments. I think Eli, I mean, we put him wherever. And second half mentalities, don't get the ball out of his hands. He'll win the game for us. And he did that. We've had great defensive stats second half. We had great special teams play second half. So I think we put it all together and come on top. What a bounce back for East Lake. The, down their starting quarterback, and here they are to continue their winning ways. I love Ruben Rod, yeah. too. You always hear the offense, but not so much the defense. Yeah. Maybe silencing some critics there. Ruben Rod, big fan of him. <laughs> but two of the biggest schools in El Paso, both in size and pride, Eastwood Troopers, Franklin Cougars. A little bit of staff confliction in this one. Adrian, you're an Eastwood grad. Mm -hmm. Big Will Heron went to Franklin. Did you guys did you guys wager anything? This I don't year? I don't mention that. Maybe at some all. Vac <laughs> vaca vacation time you put it on the line? Ooh, not at all. I don't even bring PTR. it up. Because with Will Heron, yeah, it's not gonna well, work. Well, either way, it cut up uh, one of you guys is working Christmas because I'll be back in Chicago. <laughs> Trooper Stadium we go. Shout out to the Eastwood cheerleaders. A few of them came over and brought me some hot chocolate mid-game. How nice is that, guys? Very awesome. nice. It's the trooper love. They love it. Coco aside, though, a massive district battle. The winner moved above 500. Darren Walker and the Franklin Cougars came in with the claws out. Up 14 0. Cameron Bird hits Bo Sparks. My fourth favorite Taylor Swift song. Sparks fly. <laughs> that he does to the house. Cougars up 21 0 on the road. Troopers, they were slow out of the gate, but they just needed to find their footing. Literally, this is Andrew Martinez, the quarterback. Got some, got some wheels. Take a look at the shoe. The right shoe of Martinez as he crosses the 40 flies off, but he keeps the speed. That's how fast he's going. It flies off. Yeah, on one wheel up the sideline for the 80-yard house call. No shoes, no problem. It's like a Kenny Chesney concert. Then he gets back from his O-lineman right there. That's a little help from your friends. Marching troopers here, teams with trade scores. Here hitting Michael Caldera as Martinez, pitch and catch. And we have a two-score game, 28-14. Eastwood would get and go out defensively, get a stop, and right back, Jake Janowski is making a one-score game. Eastwood Jeez. has made it a game with some quick offense, and that guy right there knows what's up. Greatest show on turf. <laughs> I Kurt love it, War yeah. Kurt Warner shout out. And then <laughs> opening drive of the second half, Trooper staying hot. Back, sh back shoulder here from Martinez to Evan Macias, who was once a three-score game, now tied at 28. But that early edge for Franklin came in handy because back the other way, Cameron Bird, solo mission around the outside. Teams essentially traded scores the rest of the way. The Cougars content to do that because they win this game by a touchdown. 55-47 the final. Cougars with three straight wins over Andrus, Montwood, and Eastwood. This is the hottest team yeah. in the city right here, guys. Those are Making three solid statement. wins. 
after a slow 0-2 start, and Will Heron is fired yeah, up. Yeah, he's giving me giving, giving the fist bump there. How does it feel, Adrian? Uh, you know what? The Troopers, I mean, the last two weeks they've been in the shutout, uh, shootout with their teams that they played last week was against Pebble Hills. So Eastwood will have to, to they'll, they'll bounce back eventually. But should mention, next week, Nate, we already have our game of the week. We can just announce it right now. It will be Franklin and Eastlake. Absolutely. Next week, both teams undefeated in district play. So Adrian, that will be an awesome one. Adrian, when I get down, you know, ever, if I get a little in the dumps, hot chocolate. Always a there great remedy for it there. <laughs> yeah. Good I'm, for the soul. I'm going to have to have some. leaders at Eastwood. I'll have some got hot it. chocolate. I'll have some hot chocolate, <laughs> right. indeed. With some Speedy's Pizza as well. Yeah, Shout that's out. a good combo it's right now. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, now let's head to District 25A, Division 2. Andres, one of the best teams in that district, taking on an awesome team, looking for their first win in district play. We go to Andres High, and to begin with, Gabrielle Lugo with the ball, and well, he coughs it up. Eagles Titus Sharp scoops it up, and usually you'd think that play would be crucial, but on the very next possession for Andres, Charlie Bass, well, he turns it over himself right back to the Panthers on the five yard line. Later in the game though, Austin forced to punt and he goes all the way up. A nice high punt there. Looks like he's from Australia with that kind of punt there on him. Anyway, <laughs> Malcolm Anderson picks it up on the return. He runs for 30 yards into Panthers territory. Two plays later, though, Elias Duncan makes an errant throw. And Jaden Wilson picks it up so quick, even our photographer Dave Moreno couldn't keep up there for a second. Wilson with the 75-yard pick six all the way to the end zone. Not a, not a bad play, that one. A momentum-turning play, making it seven all there. And Nate, coming up, you might look at this one a couple times over for potential sweet play of the oh, week yeah. nominee. Right there? No, 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 no. coming up. Check I said coming out. up. Come Check on. Eagles QB Elias Duncan looking for some redemption of his own with this 55-yard bomb. And watch out. The one-handed stab by Jeremiah oh, yeah, Cooper cool. for that's a touchdown. Cool. Yeah. PAT would be missed, giving the Eagles a six-point lead going into the half, 13-7. to seven, And they would go on with it. The finals in that one, Eagles 34 over Austin 14. Jeremiah Cooper, he's a... He's one for the headlines there, the Iowa State commit. That's, those are the kind of plays he makes. He'll be making those in the Big 12 next year. Andrus is also a former Sweet Play of the Week winners right. as well. So could they, Politics. Yeah, I mean, could they get two? They Politics could. coming they into it. You know, the plays it takes. Yeah. They're, they're racking up those cupcakes. Uh, you, you heard him earlier. Will is standing by here. Very excited after that Franklin win over my troopers. But, uh, Will, you were out at some pretty good games as well. It all, all started this afternoon at the SAC. You know, again, can I get us a trooper clap? Oh, no, you yeah, can't. Yeah, no, Just that's Just kidding it. about that, Bana. <laughs> Evening, gang. Y'all had me putting miles on the unit tonight. I was out at the sack to check out JC's Coronado T-Birds going head-to-head -head against the Boo Boo's T-Birds against the Montwood Rams. Then the Bel Air, who was facing a juggernaut in the Kenya Teal Eagles. Then finally to the coolest stadium in the United States, R.R. Jones Stadium for some Tiger on Indian violence. Roll it. Homecoming for the 1-3 Montwood Rams out at the SAG as they take on JC's 1-3 Coronado T-Birds. Montwood's looking to get started fast as the defense going to light up. T-Birds sophomore quarterback Owen Levesque with the birds. They get even. Senior Kevin Melendez keeps it up the middle but gets shaken up and leaves the game. You know what they say? Next man up. Isaac Galvan, what you got, homie? His first pass is a strike to Yamil Waxica for the first down. Galvan time as he fakes the handoff. Rolls over to his left, and he's going to find Matthew Cornejo for the six. And we're watching a Tom Brady-esque performance. Galvan would stay on the field because he's also the placeholder for the extra point team. Monwood keeping the heat on Levesque as Victor Villa leads the way for the Ram sack. Galvan still at the helm. Wow, snap goes over his head, Nate, watch. But he's as cool as his otter pop as he scoops up the ball, guns it to Waxica, who knows what to do. He takes it to the end zone for the tutty. That's how you do things. It gets wiped off the board because that guy right there threw a flag. Yeah, they do that. I agree. Ram defense again stepping up as Derek Munoz turns it on, and it's his turn to eat. The rest, though, would throw another flag. Digital ground and Kevin Wood is back in the game. As you can see here, the wheel seems fine as he sprints for the first down. Coronado defense pulls off a strong fourth down stand on their one yard line to have this happen. Looks like Montwood brought him back in the end zone for the safety, but the rest would disagree inside their end zone. Now it's to the dangerous Oaxica. 
who gets himself a little bit of a block right there. Cuts across the field. Got some time, got some room, got some speed. But he's gonna get taken down there by the three yard line. Almost got himself a tutty return. Next play though, still trouble with the snap. But Melendez handles it and gets the ball to Juan Melendez who finds Pater, the Rams, skunk the T-Birds. 34 to zip, sorry JC. Rough day for the blitz, except for me. <laughs> the wrecking ball known as the Canyon Teal Eagles flew into their home of the Bel Air Highlanders for some smash mouth football, y'all. Please keep sending me to Bel Air because our very own John McMinn was on the oh, grill yeah. again, serving up the burgers and the dogs. For snacks. It was Highlanders principal Jake Valentieras birthday. So happy birthday, Mr. Valentieras from the Blitz crew. First drive of the game, Eagle QB Devin Granados hits Nick Frias on the wide receiver screen. He finds some daylight and takes it in for the early touchdown. Highlanders, though, they weren't backing down. Noah Moreno from his four-yard line. I know him, Moreno. Lines up, rolls out of trouble, barely gets it off to Adam Gomez, who cuts across the field for the catch. Gomez then heads to the sideline, where a diving Eagle gets his foot to bring him down. Two plays later, and if it worked the first time, why not try it again? Moreno to Gomez, who this time doesn't get caught. Makes himself some room all the way in to touchdown land. After a missed extra point, the Eagles break the glass case that contains the monster, L.J. Martin, who takes the handoff up the middle, breaks multiple tackles and ankles, and gets it across the pylon. line. That dude is so good. He's going places. Next drive, Gomez running for his life, throws it up, and an ill-advised pass gets picked off by Isaiah Chavez. Use those tippy toes to stay in bounds. Eagles with the ball on the three yard line. Nate, who do you think they're gonna give the ball to? That's gotta be Martin. Man. You would think, Ho, you, you would think, you would think. But a little bit of a surprise for you. It's Devin Granados who keeps it for the sixth. KT Eagles take it 52 to 20. Sticking with the homecoming theme, they take it. El Paso High Tigers, who look to take the bite out of the Isleta Indians. Second quarter action, El Paso on the Isleta 30-yard line. Inside pitch to Pedro Chavez, who gets wrapped up at the four-yard line. Tigers, they're knocking, but the Indians aren't interested as another pitch inside comes their way, but this time the defense handles it. On fourth down, El Paso High wants those points. They need those points, but Isleta says tough tailbone bata as they make the stand. Tigers turn to show them what their defense can do. The sledders, Damien Contreras takes the snap from the gun. It's Andres Martinez who spins out of a tackle. Heads down the sideline, but gets brought down at the 43-yard line. Contreras again is going to drop back. Hits a wide open Gavin Espino who gets crushed right there. Oof. Tigers 40. A play later. Contreras playing hero. Drops back. He's going to wing it over to Jason Martinez for the touchdown. Dude's got hands. The next drive would go forward out before giving the ball back to the Indians. Now, right before the half, he's fled up, trying to sneak in some points. Can you two can smell what the Indians are cooking? Contreras gets the ball, running from trouble. Look over the open man, still avoiding the big man up front. Oh, wow. Almost gets brought down. He would run 750,000 yards to lose only five. <laughs> the Tigers squeak out the dub, 38 to 35. Rebecca Contreras is still running. That's a bit of an upset there, El Paso over Isleta. That's right, that yeah. will do it for me, fellas. I sent JC a box of tissues after that game. I'm gonna go crush me some speedies. Sorry, not sorry if all the pepperoni's gone. It's go. okay, I like yeah. cheese, so we're all good there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you deserve it, Will. <laughs> you definitely do. Well, our next game takes us to El Paso's Lower Valley. Two teams headed in opposite directions. Del Valle entering the night with a four and one record, taking on a Hanks team with only one win out of their five games. There's really no better time for a team to show out than at their homecoming. And hey, you know who else showed out? Editor, audio operator, and graphics extraordinaire. The oh, one, the only, Gavin that. Black, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know the Conquistadores look a little deflated here, but Del Valle's offense was anything but. Number 26, Diego Melda in motion. He gets the ball, immediately cuts back in. With one night to beat, he's into the end zone for the first TD of the night. And I tell you what, the Conquistadores know how to celebrate. You've got the fire truck sounding its siren, and then smoke bombs being let off at the other end zone. And the oh, Conquistadores yeah. didn't stop there. Kristen Martinez this time driving it up the gut, and he gets oh so close. But hey, 
How does the saying go? If you don't succeed the first time around, try, try again. And that he does, like a bulldozer into the end zone, he goes. And talk about a celebration, what about this? Rock a bye baby from Martinez here, bit of end seek there, bye bye bye. And hey, it was really all El Del Valle. This place sums up the INT from number three. Boom. The final in that one, Del Valle, 59 over Knights, 21. We're gonna go ahead and head across state lines for this next matchup, Centennial and Oregon Mountain, a battle over at the Field of Dreams in Las Cruces. The Hawks off to a great start at four and one. The Knights at an even two and two entering the night here. District opener for the two schools, Oregon Mountain on a two game losing skid, while Centennial has won its last four. Now it would be a surprising start here for the Knights, or was it? Quarterback Beto Garcia avoids the Hawk blitz and finds David Dorado for 42 yards. And almost outruns Centennial's secondary down to the two-yard line. Next play, what are you going to do? Just hand it off, punch it in, right? Salvador Ronquillo plows it in, and the Knights jump out to a 7 to nothing lead. But the Knights weren't done yet. Still in the first quarter, it's Garcia again. Here he's going to find Eric Dominguez. This would be a massive upset. Yeah, Dominguez <laughs> fights his way for this touchdown, 14 to nothing, Oregon Mountain. But, you know, Centennial, they had to wake up here, uh, yeah. and they would respond. Opening play of the second quarter, Ian Lopez from 10 yards out, finds the tuba. Not really, it's Isaiah Abieta, <laughs> thanks to the tuba blocking the shot there. The Hawks quickly cut the lead to seven, and on the next drive, Makai Gutierrez, all five, seven of him right here. Check it out, it's gonna scamper left and rambles 40 yards to the Knights' five yard line. So he's gonna get taken down. Setting up Lopez, who avoids the tuba and finds Abieta in the end zone. That would tie the game at 14. Hawks weren't finished yet. Following an interception with a minute left in the half, Lopez fakes left and goes downfield, finding Nathan Lada for the 18-yard touchdown pass. 20 to 14, Centennial at the break, and the Hawks go on to win this a, one by a final score of 52 to 14. That's a effort, though, from Oregon Mountain. Uh, up 14-0. Yeah. Centennial might be the best team in Cruces this year, and Oregon Mountain uh, rebuilding. That Las Cruces matchup is looking very interesting coming down the line. This is our district opener for both those teams right there. Well, coming up, Chapin. We're going to check in on those Chapin Huskies. They paid a visit all the way to Clint tonight. Jefferson and Irvin will explain why this game was postponed to tomorrow morning. And we'll also check in on those Riverside Rangers as they hosted Alpine tonight. is back for 2021 with the action-packed you got this tour coming to el paso saturday october 23rd top athletes in fmx gate bmx scooter and more are you ready to get this party started throwing down huge world's firsts off the biggest ramps in action sports with more crazy contraptions more insane stunts more high adrenaline fun than ever before el paso get ready to put your hands in the air we're coming to southwest university park this october 23rd get your tickets now at nitrocircus.com Hey El Paso, there's a big hiring event for nurses and other careers on October 12th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Wyndham El Paso Airport Hotel located at 2027 Airway Boulevard. Call or text one of our recruiters at 521-7950. On average, a motorcyclist is killed on Texas roads every day. Motorcycles are hard to see, so pay attention, especially at intersections. Look twice for motorcycles. There's a life riding on it. El Paso Inc. proudly recognizes six outstanding El Paso women who made a real impact in our community. Sylvia Acosta, Azuri Gonzalez, Tasha Hopper, Christina Mena, Carrie Moe, and Andrea Ramirez will all be honored October 21st for their outstanding contributions and tireless commitment. We thank you for your remarkable work and for inspiring us to improve ourselves and our region. For tickets to join these women, visit ElPasoInc.com. Presented by El Paso Electric and sponsored by West Star Bank. I mean, who doesn't watch the Borderland Blitz is the, is the better question. The Bulldogs, clearly. They, they're, they're all in. <laughs> all the cool cats are the ones who are watching. So, yeah, yeah if, if you're not watching, you're not cool. <laughs> Highlight Express rolls on 5A v 4A. Chapin and Clint, you're two of the Ryan Warner era at Chapin. Huskies have had an impressive start to the season here so far. High-powered offense over there at Chapin, but Clint trying to triple option their way to an upset victory. Mason Standifer, one of the better quarterbacks in the city you don't know about. Very mobile outside of the pocket. We've seen him do this a number of times this year. Hits Zeke Pastran. 
Favorite target there in the end zone for the touchdown. Huskies up early. We're flossing it. I'm in. Meanwhile, Clint the other way. Triple option. They were a sweet play nominee a couple weeks ago. Are we going to get another one here from Isaiah Gonzalez? I think so. Am I? Yeah, one not of these quite. days, I'm going to be driving out not to quite. Clint. And I'm not paying for gas. <laughs> Gonzalez this time hands it off to Zachary Delgado. Up the middle, in for the touchdown. That would do it for the highlights in this one. Go ahead and pull up the final score. Flag City, love that. Yeah. Chapin, though, the winner in this game. Fourth win, points. fourth win of the, of the season for the Huskies. Well, back in District 25A, Division Two, it was the Burgess Mustangs hosting the Bowie Bears. Shout out to Burgess superfan, Tyshawn Malo there. Same awesome again. stuff. First quarter, Mustangs on the move. We're gonna call. How about Tavares Jones, the future Missouri Tiger? Nobody's catching him. He's gonna take it to the crib. 76 yards for the house call. Mustangs gonna go up 7-0. They were just getting started. On third and 23, check out this play. Quarterback Andrew Rutledge to Nate's favorite player, Sean Street. Check it out. Is that because it's with Jason Street? Is that what? <laughs> I don't know if there's any relation, but Sean Street making some nice catches it's the right salad, there. It's the salad to go, man, the hair. <laughs> the drive would continue, and Routledge rolls to his left, and he'll find Ray Campos. Oh. Nice and easy. 14 to nothing, Burgess. You go to the second quarter, and it's more Mustangs. Routledge this time, he's been throwing it enough. He'll go ahead and keep it himself. Stretches over the goal line, and he's in. He's going to make it 21 to nil. A lot of push-ups for the Burgess Jarrow TC. Builds character. Tonight. Yeah, it does. I wasn't Jarrow to see. Wasn't very good at push-ups, though. They go on to win. Burgess, big final score in this one. There you see it. 55 to 7. Well, we had this another district showdown that was scheduled for tonight. Has now been moved to tomorrow morning. Nate, just a heads up for you. There you go. As Irvin will host Jefferson. The word that we heard from my sources was there were some issues with the JV game on Thursday. So due to security reasons and because of those problems that they had at a JV game between these two teams, they decided to hold off on the game and instead play a day game instead of playing it tonight. So they, let Jeff. They so went. What you're telling me is you can get up and watch Good Morning El Paso weekend with there me and Dylan and mm -hmm. then have enough time to go out and watch the game. Perfect Saturday morning for you. There you go. You, you'll have the weather. Kate, Kate will have the weather for you yeah. just in case you're headed out there. 10 a.m. kickoff I gotta, tomorrow at I gotta, Irvin High School. I got a hoops game at 9.50. That's going to be that's gonna be tough. And Fortunately, a guy from Channel 9 is on my team, so he might miss it there too. You go. There you go. Well, let's head to Riverfront Stadium. The 4-1 Riverside Rangers hosting the Alpine Bucks. Now, that's a 200-plus mile journey for the Bucks, and all I'll say is it's going to feel more like a 500 mile journey on the way home for them because it was all Riverside display literally happened the second I got there number four Noah Ramirez into the end zone he beats the sideline beats a couple tackles and he gets the TD Rangers up 63 to nothing there in the fourth yep you heard me right despite the massive lead though Riverside a little sloppy as the game came to a close the Bucks cleaning up the fumble there and the very next play they finally put some points on the board QB Trey Irvin drops back takes his time and lofts it on up to the end zone for Sean Foster. Too bad it wasn't that easy for him all game long. The final in that one, the Rangers 70 over the Bucks six. A thrashing to say least, is that what they do when they when they put on a big show? They, they burn the stars? That's a think? new, I think that's a new uh, newfound yeah. tradition. Mountain View also hosting a team from out of town, the Pecos Eagles. Both teams entering the game with a 3-2 record. Fourth quarter here, Lobos Junior Sacedo, the pass to Benjamin Gomez for the touchdown. And then Eagles quarterback, Colt Salgado coming up on this next play before we see the Lobo chilling out by the stands. Love that. To Colt Salgado to Ezekiel Saldana, one yard from the one yard line. Touchdown, Eagles. Then right here again, that's to Johnny Morales. Touchdown there. Oh, this is the play right here. That's got a little bit ahead of myself there. This is Johnny Morales. Are those pink jerseys? He's gonna take it to the, yeah, it is October. We are in October. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Love that. So that's you'll, awesome. al you'll always see the pink represented on high school, college, and of course the NFL uh -oh. as well. Yeah, a little, little bit of a scuffle there. We're gonna take a look at the final score. I can't tell you, Pecos will have a nice drive back home as they take the win over Mountain View tonight. 58 to 42, the final. Yeah, things getting a little Who, who won chippy. the fight is what I things wanna know. Getting little, little, things getting a little the final score. There. Whoa, whoa! We were talking about Irvin and Jefferson having to separate those two for, for a day, but now, uh, yeah. The biff is back. Visor yeah. in there getting scrappy. Pecos, man, they don't mess around, I suppose. Uh, 
you know who else, not messing you know who around. Else does, yeah, exactly. Nice segue there to our social media guru, oh, Brianna right. Perez. Uh, last week before JC comes back, just a warning on that. <laughs> <laughs> guru, I like that. Yeah. Anyways, let's talk some social media. I want to remind everybody to follow us on Twitter at Borderland Blitz. And of course, use our hashtag to be featured here on the big screen. We missed one of our favorites, I believe JC's favorite, CHS Library. Canoteo with the win over Bel Air, 52-20. Way to go, Eagles beautiful pictures nice here we go we have against the HS library two minutes left in the third quarter gonna feel lead 49 6 Bel Air I'm telling you they have great you can take some good video here oh what am I doing okay here we go the next one Terry got 35 Bel Air 6 go Eagles cheerleaders nice let's keep it going we have another one by Terry got 28 Bel Air 6 1 40, 156 left in the first Eagles quarter. Eagles heavy tonight. It's very yeah, Eagles very. heavy, yeah. Using well, with, well, with Jefferson's <laughs> game tomorrow. Yeah, where's Jeff? I'm yeah, looking for Viva La Jeff. Jeff. It's a little Viva La Jeff is uh, usually diversity. very active. So, Canotillo 14, Bel Air 6, 755 in the first quarter. And then Johnny, when ball is life, he says. I did a story on this young man a couple uh, wow. months ago. That's Johnny Fajardo. That's my dude. Whoa, look at that. Nice. Let's look at that one more time. That's nothing new. That's, that's impressive. Wow. That is impressive. So good. Well, Can you do that, sure. Nate? Yeah, no, I did a story on him a couple, a couple months ago. That, I put him through a little bit of a workout at a, a local park. That guy's going number one overall, 2031. Nice. And then the last one, of course, homecoming game time versus the Alpine Gold Rangers. I want to remind everybody to keep using our hashtag because it's my favorite part of the day. And then, of course, you can also go on our website, kva.com, to look at all the scores. And let's see how many people are watching our live stream today. 69 people watching our live stream. Ooh, nice. So lost right. 64, so we bumped up a little. Yeah, yep. bumped up by four. <laughs> of Great. course, if you don't have a Twitter, you can always send us your pictures at kva.com. Bri Brianna, when is the TikTok firing up? I can't TikTok. I don't know if somebody wants to teach me. Come I cannot on, TikTok. Rachel, you do so you know? Much, no, but you got so much time during the week to learn. It's not like you're reporting oh. all week or anything. You've got I don't know about time. all of that, but you know, if they would like to give me some time, I would love to learn some TikTok. All about All right, the TikToks. Well, thanks. Thank you very much, Brianna. <laughs> Still plenty more to come here on the Borderland Blitz. We're going to head over to San Alessario coming up after the break. Brianna actually shot this game for us. They were hosting the Torneo Coyotes. We'll also check in on the score from the Anthony game as they hosted Cobre. There's a piece of Southwest University everywhere in our community. It's on our shirts when we defend our colors. It's in the face of our children chasing a better tomorrow. It's in the hands of our graduates working every day to create a better El Paso. Everything we do is for the love of our community. So there is always a piece of us in all of our hearts. Southwest University makes you happen. If you're ready to take the next step in your truck driving career, Arribas Enterprises Transportation is ready for you. As Best of El Paso 2020 Award recipients, we're a proud member of our community and offer outstanding opportunities in the transportation industry. We offer unmatched miles and flexibility and an excellent benefits package that's good for you and your family. To find out more and how we can help you on your next career move, call us or visit us online. Arribas Enterprises Transportation Services. Committed to excellence. UTEP football kicks off Conference USA play against Old Dominion on Saturday, October 2nd. Don't miss the Miners League opener in the 2021 homecoming game. Make the Speaking Rock pregame party your tailgating destination, featuring live music from the Garth Brooks Tribute Band, plus food, drinks, and fun for the whole family. The Speaking Rock pregame party begins at 4, and the Miners battle the Monarchs at 7, sponsored by GECU. Call 747-UTEP or visit utepminers.com for tickets. Get yours now. Do you think they love the Borderland Blitz? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's the good folks over at Eastwood there. Troopers, they, troopers do love the Borderland Blitz. That's right. how I got started on this. That's where watching the show, now being a part of it. 
We got the whole, stu we got the whole yeah. student section out there that got into it. Awesome stuff. Thank you to the U Eastwood uh, student section for that. My man Warren hooked <laughs> it up over there. Eastbound, way out there. I love these matchups. Tornillo, San Elisario, both 0-5, winless entering the night. But you want to tell me these games don't matter. I mean, we, there's geographic bragging rights going out there on the edge of El Paso County. The Eagle knows what's up into the crutches there. Early on, uh, Tornillo on the screen. Mikey Barra hauls it in, but he coughs it up. Tumbling Muffin. San Elisario recovers. That's Junior Nieto. We're going the other way in favor of San Eli. Brianna actually shot this game, hooking us up with the score, letting us all know it is indeed 0-0. This is Abel Alvarado of San Eli back the other way. Oh! Gets hacked down there inside the five. Referee marks him down at the one, but Josh Garcia taps in for birdie. Touchdown, birds. Extra point, though, so, uh, no good from San Elisario. In this one. So it would be six to nothing as we spot the four. Yep, we're going to show it. Wide left. That one was no good. Regardless, San Elisario gets the win. 27 nothing. We're dancing. And we're flossing. Vibe check. This is uh, trickeration, but we're moving on. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and recap the games from last night. If we can show, though, the, the final score from that Cobra game. Apologies to that. This we got, got to show this. Anthony goes on to get their third win of the season. They beat Cobra tonight by a final score of 32 to 14. The Anthony Wildcats improved to 3-3 three and three on the season. Congrats to them. Here's what we wanted to do. Let's go ahead and run some of the other scores from today they yep. see lakeview all over favens 28 to 8. and you got st michael's over cathedral 27 to 15. So, fighting irish going down there the holy war alamogordo 50 piece mcnuggets over chaparral and then straight on forward gadsden and lovington elsewhere 52 to nothing so a couple of lopsided affairs going on in the state of new mexico well, let's go ahead and quickly recap. Now we recap the games from Thursday. It was a doubleheader over at the sack yesterday. Uh, game one between Americas and Socorro. Americas still looking for their first win of the season. This was a District 1-6A matchup. First quarter, Blazers knocking on the door. Hand off to Cesar Drennan. Cesar Drennan will just take it to the house. Americas up 7-0. And then on their next possession, Blazers within striking distance again. This time they'll go to the air. Mark Moore to Anthony Miranda. Let's put up six more for the Blazers. Americas goes on to win this one in a shutout. 26 to nail, picking up their first win in 2021. In the night game, Parkland taking on El Dorado in the first quarter. El Dorado quarterback Quincy Estrada. You're going to see right there after the Aztec mascot. Estrada with the keeper. He'll get the house call to put the Aztecs up 7 to nil. But on their next drive, El Dorado will go to the run again. Handoff to Isaiah Rudison and run Isaiah run down the sideline and just like that Aztec's gonna go up 14-0. Matadors will finally get it going in the second quarter as you're gonna see Kayshawn Zeldavar he's gonna hook up with Dante Lewis on this touchdown strike to make it 14-7. to Parkland finally on the board but Aldorado still with the lead and this game was a good one. Matadors would score a touchdown to take the lead with about 25 seconds left in the game but on the kickoff return the Aztecs would take it to the house to retake the lead and Aldorado wins it dramatic fashion yesterday 50 to 46 the final. Sweets, yeah. not me this week, Adrian. You were right. on the uh, you were on the delivery duties this week. That's right. The honor going to a team, actually, Nate, that's never won it before, and that would be the Cathedral Fighting Irish, the sweet play of the week here. It was, uh, in case you missed it, Nate, if you want to go ahead and... Yeah, Ray Hernandez here, wide receiver screen. We've got it one block there on the sideline. The offensive lineman helping his buddy out, and Ray Hernandez does the rest. A little stiff mug in the defender's kitchen right here. Dual blocking right here. Toughness at Cathedral. Right up there over on Stanton Street. And you mentioned, Danae, you were out of town, so I went ahead and did the honors and the winners of the Sweet Play of the Week. They got the cupcakes, courtesy the cupcakes. of Albertsons. We also interviewed the young man right there to talk about that play, Hernandez. So you can watch the whole presentation, actually, right now on our website, kvia.com. Right, Saw some stuff getting uh, to meet up with the Cathedral Fighting Irish and Ray Hernandez as well. No uh, no issues there with the delivery, Adrian, unlike, no. unlike last week. They all look no. like they were sitting out perfectly as well. Nate sometimes look like they're falling over a little bit, but Adrian, that's, were you driving slower than Nate? That's because, all? that's what I was going to say, Rachel, you've never been in a car with Nate. Ah, oh, it all makes sense now. That's a call That's a call to the city to pave these roads out here because it's that's wobbly. True. 
Yeah. Notably on Mesa, it takes me yep. like 45 minutes on my 10 minute commute to get home. We'll keep it here. We're gonna go ahead and recap the scores from week six, just in case you missed it. We'll have all the scores for you coming up. Need cash? Title Max offers two ways to get it. Get cash using your car title. Go to TitleMax.com, enter the car year, make, model. See how much you can get. Title Max also offers personal loans. No title required. Check out TitleMax.com when you need more cash. Check out TitleMax.com and shop us for rates. Get up to $2,500 with a personal loan or up to $10,000 using your car title. And you'll say, I got my title back with Title Max. It's a title back with Title Max. Looking to shift into an electric vehicle? El Paso Electric can help. We're your resource to learn about EVs, special charging rates, and potential incentives. Choosing an EV opens the road to a cleaner future with zero emissions on pure electric power. Plus, EVs give you a smoother and quieter drive. Driving green can save you some green. With a lower need for maintenance than gas engines and a charging rate that's about half the cost of gasoline. There are so many reasons to go electric. Get started today at epelectric.com EV. Here's the play. We stock plenty of new Nissans, go right up the middle with hard-hitting saving, and score with game-winning service. Got it. One, two, three, Casa, Casa Nissan. Nissan. Get a 2021 Nissan Titan with 0.9% APR for 60 months. And when you hand your car off to us, we'll throw you Hail Mary value for your trade. Make the smart play and come see us at Casa Nissan. Home of the nice guys. Yeah! Well, let's go ahead and recap the scores from week six. There you see East Lake over Pebble Hills, 33 to 14. Montwood wins it in a shutout over Coronado, 34 to nil. A shootout over at East El Paso as Franklin defeats Eastwood, 55 to 47. Gunner Theo over Bel Air, 52 to 20. Andrews over Austin, 34 to 14. And Burgess over Bowie. Big time, 55 to 7. Moving on, Jefferson East Leto. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Is that one postponed? Winners, El Paso High, Hanks, Riverside, all over Alpine. Long drive, as Rachel mentioned, back to Alpine, but very pretty over there in Alpine. Chapin over Clint and Pecos over Mountain View, 58 42. Then you got San Lazaro over Tornillo, 0. Lakeview over Fabens, 28 to 8. Cobre losing out to Anthony, 31 to 14. Anthony getting up there. St. Michael's over Cathedral, 27 to 15. Centennial in a big one over Organ Mountain. Organ Mountain nearly. It looked like they were going to win it in the first half there, but Centennial all them, 52 to 14. Alamo Gordo in a shutout, 50 to nothing over Chaparral. Moving on here, Lovington over Gadsden, another shutout, 52 to nil. Americas and Socorro, these games were from yesterday. Americas defeats Socorro 26 to nil, their first win of the season. El Dorado over Parkland, 50 to 46. And Las Cruces, the Bulldogs keep rolling as they beat Carlsbad last night, 42 to 13. Well, there you have it. Again, our game of the week, hands down, Franklin, Eastlake. Eastlake undefeated on the season, Franklin 2 and 0 in district play. It's going to be an exciting matchup. It's going to be a lot of offense in that one. Pass out the ammunition. Mm -hmm. You saw that shootout over. The, well, Nate, you were at that. East I, you, I, you just saw them trading. I saw trading it firsthand. Yeah. Rachel, again, thank you very much. Thank for, you for having for me, guys. Us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, hopefully, you know, we'll get you back in here at some point in later in the season. But uh, again, thank you very much, Rachel, for filling in for Mr. JC Navarrete. Who no, been... thanks for having me. Nate, I got to ask, you said Sparks Fly number four, Taylor Swift song. What's number one? You got to DM me for, uh, oh. for, the, for, for the top three. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Today was a fairy tale. Uh, in the top, today was a fairy tale in the top three, um, but uh, you got to you got to ask me for the other three. Wow, I guess we'll be going on but the Instagram Rachel, DMs let's, later. Rachel, let's, Rachel, let's see if you remember what's my third favorite Will Smith song. Switch. That's right. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next week as we move on to the second half of the season, week seven of the Borderland Blitz. Uh, for now, uh, I think that's New York City. We're kind of hey. yeah. We've been NYC. closing it out with random cities. So let's go ahead. Let's continue the trend. Good night.